morning boys and girls. Welcome to today's talk time with Pastor Krista. Today, I'm going to be answering a question that I was asked by one of our children who watches our talk times. And he asked me this after Easter. He said, why did Jesus have to die on the cross? Well, the simple answer to that is that Jesus had to die so we might know how to live. One of the things, the many, many things Jesus taught us is about prayer and the importance of praying. So I have a gift today, and this is a gift that I receive every single day from Jesus. Every day I wake up, I get this gift from Jesus. Do you want me to open it up? Let's see what's inside of it. So first, I'm gonna take the big fancy bow off, and I'm gonna set it over here, and then I'm gonna open my gift. And I don't know about you, but I love opening presents. And how cool is it that we love Jesus? We love a Jesus who gives us a gift every single day. So it looks just like a shoebox to me, but I'm going to open it up. And guess what? Look what's inside. You might be saying, well, Pastor Krista, there's nothing inside that box. But you know what? There's a gift in here that Jesus gives me every day. And it's the gift of prayer. And how do I know that there's something in this box, even though it doesn't look like there's anything? I know that because prayer is something that's inside the box, it's inside us, it's all around us, and that is one of Jesus' greatest gifts, is prayer. Because we can take our prayer and we can go right to Jesus for prayer. Now that's how you know Jesus and that's how you know prayer. You know that when something's weighing on your heart or mind, you just have to bow your heads and close your eyes or open your hands and raise your face to the heavens and you can pray to Jesus. And we can pray anywhere we are. We can pray at night when we're in our beds. We can pray while we're cooking. We can pray while we're playing with our friends. We can pray while mom or dad are driving our cars. Prayer is something that we can take right to Jesus. But that is not a gift that people always had. Years and years ago, over 2,000 years ago, when Jesus walked the earth, if his friends wanted to pray about something, it was a big deal. It was a whole process. And that's why I have everything else laid out in front of me. So I'm going to put our prayer box over here. Years ago, Jesus' friends, when they wanted to pray, they had to go to the temple. So let's take me as an example. Let's say that I did something that I want to be forgiven for. Maybe I said something that I didn't really mean, or I did something to hurt a friend and it wasn't really intentional, and it was kind of weighing on my heart, and I wanted to take it to God, and I wanted to say, God, you know, I'm so sorry about this. I probably could have used different words, or I could have done something differently. Well, back in Jesus' day, before Jesus died, this is what people had to do. So I want you to pretend this big footstool is the temple. The temple is like the big church that they all had to go to. And people would have to go to the temple. And when they got to the temple, they had to see a priest. And they couldn't pray directly to God. They had to ask the priest to pray to God for them. That doesn't sound too sensible, does it? So here's what they had to do. They would go to the temple. And when they got in the temple, the first thing they had to do was they had a wash. They got a basin and they had to wash their hands and they had to wash their feet and they had to dry them off before they could even see the priest. So once they got all washed up, they had to take some money. They had to get their money and they had to go to a special area where you could buy animals. You could buy, I have right here, my funny purple stuffed rabbit that I got from my children years ago. And I don't think they sacrificed rabbits. What they probably did is they had to buy maybe a dove, a bird, or they had to buy a sheep or a goat, depending on how serious their prayer was. Now, what would they do with that animal? After they paid somebody to purchase an animal, what do you think they would do? Well, what they did is they would go to the priest and then they'd have to pay the priest to take the animal and sacrifice it on the altar because they believed back in the day that if you did something that you needed forgiveness for, that this, that something else had to be given up. 
And that was always some kind of an animal. Like I said, usually a bird or a sheep or a goat. So think about this process. You had to go to the temple. You had to get washed up. You had to pay to, for an animal to be sacrificed. And then you had to take the animal to the priest and you had to pay the priest to pray for you. So that's quite a big process, isn't it? We have to do one, go to the temple, two, get washed, three, get your money, four, buy an animal, five, pay the priest, two, six, pray for you. Now, I'm gonna put all this away and I want you to watch how easy Jesus made it for us. Where am I gonna put this? Let's set this down here. This is how easy Jesus made it for us. I wanna pray now, guess what I do? I just open this gift that Jesus gave me, this gift that I'm given every day. I don't have to go through a person, I don't have to pay anybody, I don't have to buy an animal, and I don't have to wash my hands and feet. I can come in from playing outside all dirty and I can just close my eyes and say, Jesus, I just said something to somebody that I need to be forgiven for. Or, and we're gonna find out when we read our scripture, that prayer isn't always about praying for something when you've done something wrong. So let's take a look at our Bible today. We're going to be reading two scripture verses today. And the first one is from the book of Chronicles. And this is from Chronicles, 1 Chronicles 16 through 11, 1 Chronicles. And it says, look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. The second is from the book of James and it's James 5, 13. And this will tell you that prayer is not always when you do something wrong. And this is something I think we forget sometimes, that sometimes when things are going right and things are good, it's important to pray then too. And this is what it says. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. So I love the scripture from James because it tells us that we don't always need to go to God only when something's wrong. We can go to God and we could say, God, Thank you so much for this really good thing that's going on in my life. But that's another gift of prayer Jesus bought, brought to us. Because back in Jesus' day, people only went to pray when something was wrong. But Jesus taught us that prayer is not always when things are going wrong. When things are really right and really good, that is also a wonderful time to pray. So our song today is actually from a traditional hymn. It's not really a children's song. And I'm gonna do my very best to sing it because it's a little more <clears throat> grown up than the ones we usually sing. But it's a verse, I'm only singing four lines of one of my favorite hymns. And I want you to listen really carefully to the words. And this is what it says. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Now, think about that. It says, what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Not just the yuck, but the really good stuff too. So as you go through your day today, I want you to open your gift this morning and say, wow, God, this is so cool that I can pray right to you. So for my friend Joey, who asked me, why did Jesus have to die on the cross? This is one reason. So we wouldn't have to go through all of that to get to God because Jesus is a direct connection. So here are these words of leaving and it says, my heart loves your heart because Jesus first loved us. So you have a wonderful day and we will see you for talk time tomorrow.